All right, Earth Science people, this is the last video of Michigan Geology. I know I said, that I said there was going to be two, but uh, I lied to you again. So we left off with a failed mid-continental rift. Now, what that gave us up in the UP in Lake Superior is um, here is our failed rift. There's one arm there. There's another arm there. And this was the arm that never kind of never went anywhere. So if you take a look at this picture here, we can actually see the magma, the trails of magma coming up here. And this, if this would have been um, uh, a picture of the, the, the history of this, the time this was being made, this would have been a divergent boundary that would have bulged up here, and this plate would have gone this way, and this plate would have gone this way. This is a actual um, what has happened over the past uh, billion years, basically. And you can see the magma. Uh, trail here, which did originally lead to a divergent zone, but because of the failed rift zone, it never got to be what it needed to be for that to separate the continents. And at that point, we had some uh, uh, some mountain building events. We had some more bulging of the rocks here, and this is from Isle Royal to Keweenaw Peninsula, which is basically this area here. It's there's the Keweenaw, and here is the uh, here's Isle Royal right up here. So that's the, basically this area from right here, and we can see all the sedimentary rocks. And what I like about this picture is that this has got not only of the, not only does it show the volcanic rocks here from the uh, the rifting, the failed rifting era, but we've also got the lighter rocks here from the sedimentary region. This is the seven seas that came in. That little packet that we did in class talked about the seven seas. This is all the sedimentary rocks that were laid down in the seven seas. And then after that, of course, we have the glaciers. All right, so I'm going to go back to this picture real quick. So up here, basically, mountains. Lots and lots of mountains being built. Failed drift zone, leaving a depression in there. Um, and then we have the oceans that came in. The oceans covered basically the entire area from uh, from the eastern seaboard all the way up through the Rocky Mountains over in these states. These states. Seven times they came and went, leaving behind settlements over the entire region. Uh, after that, we had the glaciers come in. Glaciers came down here, went all the way down to Ohio down here. And uh, basically, with the mountains that were there in the UP and Canada, basically, when you have a huge sheet, a massive sheet of ice, pushes them down. So these mountains were flat. The, the ground was scarred all the way down here. The mountains retreated and advanced several times and then finally disappeared. Once that happened, we have something that call, is called isostatic rebound. That isostatic rebound basically tells the story of the mountains rebounding and jumping back up into the air off the ground, not literally off the ground, you know what I mean, rising, rising up and um, creating some bowing. So basically this ground started to be elevated here, which causes these outside layers of the sedimentary rocks, the seven sedimentary rocks to be shown in different areas in Michigan like this. So this is the basin region, and that's how we get this region here. So this diagram here basically is a really good example of the mountainous regions at the edge of the Rift Valley up in the UP up here. And then we've got the igneous, and uh, here's the some more igneous material here, igneous rocks that were deposited a lot just after the rifting. And then we've got some sedimentary material here from the erosion of those mountains after the glaciers came, or the seas came in. They laid down all these layers of sedimentary rocks here that were one time flat, but once the glaciers came in, these mountainous regions rebounded and started to bow up this area right here, leaving the Michigan Basin.